the Fire Within Podcast. You need a sustainable plan, the right mindset, and the knowledge and inspiration to stoke the fire within. Just like the Phoenix, you can burn your old habits, never turn back, and emerge completely anew. There are no shortcuts. Welcome, Fire Within community. This is the Fire Within Podcast, where we talk about all things health, fitness, and nutrition related. I'm your host, Brandon, with my co-host, Joe. Hello. And we also have Molly in the studio with us, your ever-faithful Shiba Inu, who is going to take a nap. That's correct. Yeah, we had an episode with her a few weeks ago where her liver enzymes were... Over 3,000, and they're supposed to be under 131, and uh, she almost died. So um, well, She's on the path to recovery now, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah, we took her to Quartet. They took good care of her. That's an emergency vet clinic, and uh, $3,000 later, I've got a functioning dog, but now she pees in her sleep, but she's alive, and she's spunky and back to her old self, and only two more days of squirting amoxicillin down her throat. <laughs> oh. Speaking of squirting amoxicillin down her throat... <laughs> <laughs> what we decided to talk about today is supplements. <laughs> exactly. So when people start a workout program, um, a lot of times they can get very frustrated if they don't see results right away. And a couple of weeks ago on our last solo cast, we talked about our experience in starting the uh, tempered steel plan, which an adaptation of that is going to be used for the six week health redemption challenge, which I'm really excited about. We'll give you more information on that. But after me and Joe's results, after six weeks, I, I barely lost a pound. It was very frustrating. Yeah. And we talked briefly about how good thing that we measured our body fat with the calipers and we measured chest and stomach and stuff. And, and even last week, I was really frustrated. I came to work out and I'm like, I just got to measure my stomach because you just get discouraged when you work out so dang hard and you don't see results. But then I measured my stomach and I lost an inch. And so it was all in my head. I was just getting all up in my business. And I think that's what happens with people when it comes to like you're talking about working out is if the scale, which is what a lot of people use as the primary metric, doesn't reflect that you're heading in the right direction, then you're like, why even work out? Yeah. When in reality, you might be adding muscle, which could be more heavy than fat. What happened to me is because when we did the calipers and everything else, I put on, you know, 4.9 pounds of uh, muscle and lost around the same amount of fat. Yeah. So the scale said I've done nothing in six weeks. Yeah. And my scale side has been very not exciting. But at the same time, I don't know, how much have I lost off my stomach? Like five inches or something? Yeah. And put two or three on my chest? Yeah, that's like a, a Los Angeles Yellow Pages phone book <laughs> yeah. of your stomach that's gone. But I feel like that's our thing. Like, we're just Americans, damn it. Like, I worked out. Uh, where's my six-pack? Like, instantly <laughs> to the mirror. <laughs> it's like, but I worked out hard. I sweat and everything, dang it. <laughs> I keep going to Michelle. I've eaten good for a week. Why is it still there? <laughs> when you start a program, there's going to be changes. Is if you, if especially if it's a strength training program, you're going to put on a little bit of lean muscle tissue, which yes, adds weight. However, in the long run, the more lean muscle tissue you have, the more fat you're going to burn. You are exponentially speeding up your metabolism and it will catch up if you stay consistent. Let me ask you, you've trained a lot of people, the rate at which people see results. Do people who haven't worked out in a long time, do they see results faster versus people who are consistently working out, trying to take it to the next level? Typically, they do. They'll, especially men, unfortunately. Um, just the hormones are different. But men tend to see a much quicker drop-off. And for women, there's a lot at play. There's a ton of hormones. You've got their cycle to think about, water retention, past history, how long their metabolism has been dysfunctional. So I have worked with some women where they don't see uh, weight results initially, yeah. but hormonally, if they're eating the right things they're exercising properly for their body, things are starting to line up to allow for weight loss. So for some people, it could be six months down the road and for others, they can see weight loss right away, which is very frustrating. Yeah. So how do you coach people like to have a goal that makes sense for them? Cause if you work out really hard and you might not see results for six months, that's six months with no celebration. Like you haven't done, in your mind, your body is going to be telling you, you haven't done anything. Yeah. So in the clients where that does happen, we start looking at their habits and we start thinking about now, how has your sleep been? Is your sleep cycle improving? How are you bouncing back from stress? What is your inflammation response like? Is your GI tract getting better? Is your focus getting better? And in some cases we could actually do blood work and prove hormonal change is starting to happen. Sorry, I got distracted. I have a black marking tape on my studio floor to tell people where to stand and your dog's trying to eat it. 
(laughs) (laughs) Yes, she is. Get on your mark. Get on your mark. (laughs) Molly. (laughs) I love it. I should bring her into the studio more often. We were talking, even in that last episode, the last solo cast, about how, like, by itself, weight is such a poor metric. Yeah. And if you really unpack, if you're talking about setting a sustainable goal, which is, I know, a big part of what we're talking about, a sustainable goal is found out by really finding what motivates you internally. And I think a lot of people think losing weight, but that's not it. Like, it's usually not losing weight. It's usually some deeper thing. Having more confidence because you look in the mirror and you're proud of what, yeah. um, not necessarily the number on the scale. So, so and I know look- for me, like, I would like to lose weight. That'd be cool. But I just don't want to punch out at 60, like the majority of the men in my family. Yeah. You know, so I want to be around for when my kids grow up and they have kids. And so that's really the why. The, the scale would be nice. Yeah. But it's also, it's more important to me is that I just have a, a level of longevity. And your body composition could change drastically and the scale say absolutely nothing. I guess that's the frustrating thing yeah. that people don't seem to wrap their <laughs> mind around. Yeah. Because you hear all the horror stories of I started the diet, I've worked really hard, blah, 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 and then nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when in reality, like 15 things could have significantly changed. Yeah. But the scale doesn't reflect that. And so we're super tied to that. Now, I did think it'd be kind of cool to talk about something you can do to help see those results. I think proper supplementation could benefit people, especially just starting out with a program, because it's one of the easiest habits you can do here. Just take this as long as it's safe, healthy, effective, and a pure food source. Brandon, aren't supplements just expensive pee? (laughs) <laughs> Most of them are, yes, Joe. I do think there are some out there that are helpful. When you are taking supplements and you're spending the money on them, it helps drive behavior. So somebody that is just starting a program, I think that's one of the things they can do to help stay on track, not only with the habits, but if they're properly sourced, they do a lot of good things. So I did want to take some time on this episode and go over some of the most effective, safest, most well-studied ones. Yeah. And to start with... I hadn't um, considered that, though, like to your point, that it could be another habit builder in a sense. Just like occasionally we'll do a really hard workout and I'll be like, oh, I could go out for a cheeseburger or I could order something good. Like yesterday I went to Kraft, which is a great restaurant here, and I ended up ordering this the salmon salad, made a good decision. One of the main considering factors was I worked out too dang hard today to blow it. On this cheeseburger meal, you know, (laughs) and I think supplements might have that same effect. Like I spent all this money on these supplements. I'm not going to blow it by eating this can of Pringles. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. To Um, wash down my fish oil. Yeah. So let's kick this thing off with a uh, multivitamin. Now. I don't take a multivitamin. Do you? I currently do not because I'm now taking beef liver, which uh, has, which is a super whole food, high density, nutrient dense a form of vitamins. It doesn't have the entire complete breakdown as a high quality multi, but it's a little bit cheaper. And for my budget right now, that's one of the decisions I decided to make. But there are some really good multivitamins out there. And I thought I'd give people a good checklist of what to look for. So the primary function of a multivitamin is to fill in the gaps of vitamins and minerals that you're missing in your diet. Now, if you have a multivitamin full of oxides that aren't very absorbable, I don't think you're accomplishing that goal. Cool. So I can just take a multivitamin and then eat crap and not to worry about eating vegetables and stuff? You got it, Joe. You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. No, not at all. If you're still eating like crap, the multivitamin's not really going to sh- do a whole lot for you because your stomach's going to be inflamed. It's going to be hard to absorb those nutrients properly and all kinds of other things. But what we do want to see in a multivitamin is chelated minerals. If you see oxide down that list on the back of all the minerals, that's a about as about 10% as effective as a chelated form of a mineral because your body has to upconvert it first. So wow, that much 10%. Approximately. Thanks. It's going to be different for everyone. But through some of what I studied, that's the number that seems to come up the most often. Now that doesn't mean that oxides are completely useless, but if I'm going to spend money on a supplement, I'd like for it to be properly absorbable. So one of the other things I'll do is I'll go straight to B12, which is a very important nutrient for metabolism, for energy, for all kinds of things. If you see B12 listed as cyanocobalamin, starting with a C, then that is going to be like that oxide. It's about 10% as effective because it has to be upconverted first. So you want to see methylated forms of B12 or methylcobalamin. 
And then the next thing I'm going to look at is folate or folic acid. So if you see folic acid instead of folate, it's not a very high quality, high absorbable form. We want to see folate. So if those things check out, you probably have a good multi, but then there's one more step. You want to look at fillers, artificial sweeteners, and additives. So if you go to the other ingredients, if you see dyes like red number 40, hydrogenated oils, trans fats, dairy, soy, wheat, corn, gluten, all those types of things, it's probably not worth doing. Like a Centrum Men's 50 has hydrogenated oil in it, which is a component to arthrosclerosis so, and a multivitamin. Like, why do we do that? Is that cheap? Is it filler? Like, I don't have any idea, Joe. Because sometimes you take, like I was shopping for supplements the other day and it's got three different kinds of sugar in it. I'm like, oh, I'm not chewing it. It's a freaking <laughs> pill. Like, why would you add sugar? Only way place that I've seen where sugar could be a good thing is with electrolytes. So if it's an electrolyte powder, sugar's going to help transport the electrolytes into the cell more. But I don't think that's necessary for a multivitamin. So the next thing I want to look at is protein powders. There's hundreds of them on the market. Some are terrible. Some taste amazing, but have all kinds of crap in them. One of the first things I want to look for is... So is it, one thing I think that's it's helpful to me, because when I started doing this podcast with you, I felt like drinking from a fire hose. One thing that might be good to tell people is like, why protein powder? Like, I think most people know vitamins. Yep, I need vitamins. Vitamins yeah. is good. But like, why would people take a protein powder? Sure. So most people don't have enough protein in their diet, which means less lean muscle tissue which means slower metabolism, which means more fat gain. And the other thing protein does is it slows the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. So those hunger cravings and hangry times you get because your blood sugar dropped, that could be slowed down if you have enough protein in your diet. One, by keeping uh, appropriate amount of lean muscle tissue for a faster metabolism. And two, it's actually going to help your eating patterns and habits because it's going to keep your blood sugar from swinging from highs to lows as much. So you won't. So it'll minimize the cravings. and Exactly. So those are some of the reasons. Um, now I'd always heard that like the primary reason was to get gains. Not necessarily. Like get um, my j gallon jug of water and. <laughs> Eat protein. No, especially not on a weight loss diet uh, or approach, but it can be helpful. The other thing about protein powder versus any other type of protein is it's immediately absorbable into the bloodstream, which matters with timing with your workout. Now, if you're just sitting on your couch and that's the time you choose to do your powdered protein, you're not utilizing it for its what it's most advantageous for. I think timing it either 30 minutes to an hour before or after your workout, you're going to get better use out of that protein because protein could be used for all kinds of things in the body. We want it to post-workout. We want most of it to go to muscle resynthesis because that's what jacks up your metabolism, causes growth hormone to spike and make some changes in your body. And when we pick a protein, I try and do either collagen or vegetarian, vegan based, plant-based because uh, whey protein for a lot of people, not everybody, but it can cause issues with the lining of the small intestines, could cause blood sugar issues, respiratory issues, um, and it can irritate the gut, making it harder to achieve your goal and just causing general discomfort, skin issues, and on and on. Now, if you go to firewithinnf.com and you go to our nutrition course section, there is a free section of the course all on supplements. It's the, the last one. Uh, so if you want to click that, you can get all of this information with recommendations with some of the best brands out there in, every, in almost everything we're talking about on the show for at least the main five. So that's something to consider. Yeah, one of the recommended brands for protein powder is Vega. And that's the one I've been on. And the chocolate one's great, but the coconut one's really good. They have a coconut one? Yeah. Oh, man. It's good. I'll have to give that a shot. <laughs> Now, one that's not on here because I discovered it after we created the course, we can update that, is uh, Truvani. Now, the only thing is it does have quinoa, which is an ancient grain, and I do try and stay away from grains. Oh, that's in the uh, greens mix. I think they're just regular protein ones don't, though, because they have, they have a greens one, which is only 10 grams of protein and focuses more on getting a ton of vegetables and things in, and then they have just a protein one. They have this banana cinnamon one that's really good, but some of the Truvani ones are pretty good. Can't help but notice there's none on the recommended brand list that contain whey protein. 
Nope, not at all. <laughs> yeah, we try and stay away from whey. Also, you want to look for sucralose. A ton of them and other supplements and pre-workouts and post-workouts use sucralose. If you haven't been listening to the show before, sucralose is a non-caloric sweetener that was derived from a pesticide that would attract bugs due to the sweetness and cause their intestines to explode. So when humans have a lot of sucralose in the diet, we can experience GI upset. So I do try and steer my clients far away from anything that uses sucralose as a sweetener. Same thing with aspartame. The views and opinions expressed on this show are not meant to be used as medical advice. Consult your doctor before implementing any health or exercise changes. The Fire Within encourages you to do your own research and aims to spark interest and motivation to a healthier lifestyle. Right, the next one is controversial, and there's a lot of back and forth on what the truth is about vitamin D. There's some debate um, in the medical community about whether or not overdosing with vitamin D as a supplement in the colocosylpherol form can cause cancer and other things like that. So I actually haven't seen enough research to sway me completely in one direction or the other yet. But if you are taking vitamin D and you want it to be effective, I think that it should be in the form of D3 and it should be paired with K1 and K2. That's going to help you to be able to absorb it. But even more important than the vitamin D is actually going to be magnesium. Because if you're deficient in magnesium, you can't even absorb the vitamin D you're taking as a supplement. So I actually think a better way to increase your body's production of, of vitamin D naturally is to make sure your magnesium is where it's supposed to be. And I would actually prioritize supplementing with magnesium over vitamin D. Um, and of course, getting sunlight in the earlier parts of the day are going to help you naturally increase that. And uh, some people call vitamin D their happy pills. Vitamin D is an important precursor for both serotonin, which is your feel-good hormone, and melatonin, which is what helps us get proper sleep. So it is a big deal, but I would focus more on magnesium than I would vitamin D. All right, next on the list is magnesium. Magnesium, of course, it can make you poop if there's a lot of it, but that's not what we're talking about here. Milk of magnesia. Um, most people are, are incredibly deficient. I think it was estimated 90% of Americans or something don't get enough magnesium. And there's various reasons why. So I think for anybody, that's a really important one. It helps to regulate heartbeat, helps with blood sugar. It helps with mood, sleep, energy. Any kind of metabolism type thing has to be attached to magnesium in order for it to operate all kinds of coenzymatic factors. So I think that's a really important one to supplement with. Again, we don't want one that's strictly an oxide. I don't mind if it's a blend that includes oxide, but there should be some chelated versions. You've got magnesium citrate, bisglycinate, tarate, sulfate. There's tons out there and they all can be helpful for different reasons. So citrate is actually more absorbable than oxide. So I like that one. Bisglycinate is better for calming effects. Tarate is better for the cardiac benefit. Magnesium chloride and sulfate are better absorbable through the skin. So that's like magnesium Epsom salt baths. So you're going to have to deep dive in this stuff because most of the time if you hit the supplement aisle, it's just going to say magnesium. <laughs> At the store, I don't recommend getting your supplements from the grocery store, Walgreens, Amazon. You can shop all kinds of brands and look for some of these key factors. And then I give you recommendations, Thorn Research, Designs for Health, Lifetime Fitness. All those are on this free course, the free section of the course, if you want to check it out and everything we've talked about. So definitely get your magnesium. Next would be fish oil. You take fish oil, Joe? I do. Woot. I do, I do. And uh, I learned the hard way to get the burpless kind. <laughs> so every time you burp, you don't smell like fish. That's important. Yeah, yeah. I freeze mine. That helps a lot. But the prim primary function is helps with your brain, helps with fat metabolism, helps with inflammation and joint lubrication. And if you've got uh, fatty acids uh, freely available in the bloodstream, then the body feels more comfortable burning fat as an energy source. Uh, so I think that's a great thing for people to do. You do want to make sure it's in a non-light penetrable bottle. Because it's going to spoil. Yeah, it's going to oxidize it. Uh, so if it's this clear bottle, like those super mega bottles from Costco that are just in a clear bottle, that's oxidized AF. I wouldn't spend any money on that. And then what kind of, is it, do you care what kind of fish it's made from? Yeah, it should be smaller game fish uh, with less mercury, which are going to be like sardines, mackerel, and herring primarily. And those are going to be your best type of fish for fish oil. 
Now, there are some contraindications to fish oil. If you're on blood thinners, you may want to talk to your doctor first because fish oil can increase the viscosity of blood. And if mm-hmm. you're already prone to having really thin blood, we probably would want to talk to a doctor first. And, and it's a good idea to talk to a doctor before adding any supplements if you have any concerns. Yeah, I made sure to, before I started taking supplements, I talked to my doctor at my physical because I am taking uh, blood pressure medicine. And you just don't want to mess with something that you don't really know enough about. So that's a good one. And then the last one I want to talk about in any great depth is L-glutamine. And this is one of my favorites. This, is, this comes in handy when you're squatting for the L-glutamine. <laughs> <laughs> so L-glutamine does all kinds of amazing things for us. My primary reason for wanting it is it helps to heal the lining of the small intestines. So if you've heard of leaky gut, that's what it fixes. So all the types of things on the no-go list, like wheat, grain, corn, soy, dairy, alcohol, and sugar that punch holes in the lining of your small intestines and cause inflammation, L-glutamine comes back behind that and fills in those holes and, and patches it over. It's like fix a flat. So that's something I recommend. The other thing it does is it helps speed up the recovery of soreness post-workout. And really important for weight loss, it stops or at least slows down the loss of lean muscle tissue as you work to lose weight. Because typically, if you're rapidly losing weight, your body's going to lose some lean muscle tissue with it, and we want to minimize that to keep the metabolism high. So the typical serving scoop is 4.5 to 5 grams. That's pretty small, right? That's like a teaspoon. Yeah, or less. I'm not exactly sure how much a teaspoon is, but it's a pretty small scooper. I prefer the powder instead of the capsules. The capsules usually have junk in them and they help and they can slow the absorption rate. So I always prefer a powder that you put in a liquid and yeah. and you drink it. And this one's the Super Bowl affordable. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it's supplement. one of the cheapest ones. You get ninety servings for twenty bucks. I bought a two pound bag. It was like, Oh yeah. It was not a lot of money. It was uh, bulksupplements.com. Somewhere like that. Something like that. Those are the main ones that I think most people can benefit from. There's hundreds out there. There's L-carnitine is something that that can help. L-carnitine helps with fat metabolism. I usually prefer it in liquid form. There is a warning and a disclaimer I'm going to put with this, though. It can make your junk smell like fish. L-carnitine? Carnitine. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the uh, common symptoms, especially if you overdose on it. Now, if you buy a really expensive, high-quality one, like from Thorne or Designs for Health, um, you may not get that symptom. And it can cause some GI upsets. It's not for everybody, but people looking for a natural thing to add to their diet, and L-carnitine is a component of protein. Red meat and things like that will have it. But it does help speed up fat metabolism. Is there a point where you're taking too many supplements? I think if you were to add nine in your diet all at once and you don't know what's affecting what, it's hard to even tell if what you're doing is making a difference. So I usually recommend slowly introducing them one a week, making sure that you feel a difference, you're seeing a difference. Now, sometimes it could take up to three months for there to be a significant difference with the supplement as it builds up in your system. But honestly, if you're not changing your habits at all and you're just taking a supplement, that would be a waste of supplements. But it's hard to say. I, th- I think there's some vitamins that you can go over the toxicity level with. Uh, vitamin A and vitamin, I think vitamin A is famous for that. So you definitely don't want to be like hyperdosing with 10 times the daily recommendation of anything. I usually like there to be a reason to take them. But the foundational ones that I suggest, I think most people would benefit regardless of what their situation is. A but- couple of times I've tried in my life to do like a multivitamin, it really discolored my urine. Oh, that's usually B12. Uh, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I, it, it, or fluorescent yellow. Or, yeah, it just made me think like, uh, well, am I super dehydrated? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's if you have a, if you have one with B twelve in it, uh, that's common, and that doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong. But that's a pretty common side effect, even with the super high end, super absorbable ones. That's a common uh, side effect. Vitamin toxicity could be problematic. Too much L glutamine can potentially cause anxiety. I actually saw on one website where it said itchy butthole could be a symptom. I've never heard of that in my 10 years, but apparently it could happen. But uh, So I do think it's important to listen to your body and track what's going on as you introduce these things. And if you really wanted to know, you could do blood work every three to six months to show, am I actually benefiting from this or not? And is there anything alarming happening? But the ones I recommend, if they're from the proper sources, should be just as safe as eating a banana. But But still, I always encourage, check with your doctor, make sure... Um, There's no contraindications with medicines you're taking or specific conditions you have. And it's probably smart to start taking a supplement based on a blood work test or something. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, As um, opposed to just being like, hey, these seem popular. <laughs> yeah, now the basic ones like protein powder, fish oil, you probably don't have to worry about too much. If you're adding um, L-carnitine, if you're adding chromium, if you're adding berberine, like certain liver issues, you shouldn't be adding berberine. Some of the specialty ones definitely would make sure to, to do some blood work first and make sure that you're doing something good for your body. And there's a couple other things out there. There's uh, a lot of people are into green tea phytosome. I mean, I think that can speed up metabolism or you could just drink green tea. So that's something that can help. Curcumin could be one, but it should be paired with black pepper oil. That's something that can help with metabolism and inflammation. But again, this stuff can get expensive and overwhelming. So I don't want you to just throw 30 supplements at it. But I just thought it'd be interesting to give our viewers uh, some information so you can make informed decisions on what you get in the future. So once again, almost all the information we shared is put together. There's a video explanation with notes on firewithinnf.com in the course section. Uh, so make sure you check that out. If you found anything useful on this episode or any other episode we've produced, please leave us a five-star rating on Apple. That helps other people find the show. And feel free to write in with uh, questions, comments, things you'd like to hear. I love hearing from you guys. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. If you did, go check us out at firewithinnf.com and sign up for Refuel, a weekly email with recipes, videos, and tips to stoke the fire within. Also, you can join the Fire Within community by being added to our Facebook group. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Oh, 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 oh,